All right, and we are go for launch. How's it going, Luke? Doing good, man. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. A lot of things are going on in, gosh, pretty much everything. It's uh, still pretty crazy. How are things on your front when it comes to lead gen? Um, I tested out a... Uh... You're, you you mentioned uh, are you you know the the buyer friendly or like the you know campaign so I did, I did a an initial like beta test um and uh, it seemed to seemed to click really well what was it what was okay so clearly this is something that you and I talked about what yes it was an idea that you broached and it was I mean it's essentially it's a an ad campaign for properties that will pay buyer commission. Yeah, we were talking about it probably on our last, I think it was either it was either last week or the week before. Yeah. And we were talking about buyer agency and one of the stipulations within the NAR settlement is that commissions or compensation cannot be negotiated through the MLS, which is weird by itself because that's mm -hmm. that's the whole basis of an MLS system. Right. However, it also says that it broker, I'm paraphrasing, but individual brokers can create their own website and promote their own compensation. So what you did is you, I'm, I'm, tell me if I'm right, you came up with an ad that, that illustrates what properties are already promoting compensation? So um, <clears throat> this was, um, so... Kind of like a, a combination of that too. So you know, like the the traditional like get a list of homes type angle. So yeah. it's like you know get a list of homes in the median price, or get a list of homes with you know in a gated community or with a pool or whatever. Same concept of that. So get a list of homes that uh, you know will cover buyer commissions. Perfect. And you've gotten good response from it. Yeah, I mean, just the initial like putting it out there you know what? Was, uh, wait until like, july wait until july yeah. when everything actually goes into effect because right now people right. are still i think a lot of the back-end leaders when it comes to mls systems and real estate yeah the, the, right. the, the real estate local real estate offices into the mls systems they're still trying to figure out the logistics of compliance mm -hmm. so that's all supposed to be done in july to go live if i, if I remember correctly Happen in July, go live in August. Could be happening right. in June, go live in July. Can't remember. One of those. But yeah, it's it's a real thing. And a lot of the questions that I'm getting just from a basic, from an agent, they come and say, well, what do we do? And the big thing is what they're not referencing or what they're not understanding is that it's not saying that a seller cannot offer compensation. It's just saying you can't do it through the MLS. So my response right. is, I'm like, well, geez, if you got a buyer that wants to buy a property and you don't know if any compensation is happening, pick up the phone, call the listing agent and ask them. I mean, that right. seems like pretty, pretty simple stuff there. I don't know. Maybe I'm oversimplifying things. I used to do that two decades ago the reason why I did it is was for for sell by owners. For sell by owners, don't list their property through the MLS. For sell by owners, typically list on their own because they don't want to pay a commission. So what do you do if you're an agent? You call them and say, hey, if I have a buyer, would you be willing to pay a commission? It's really that right. simple. Yeah. I might be oversimplifying it, so I'm throwing out that disclosure. I don't well, think I, I am, but I, I might be. I, I think that's important in the realm of things is to kind of like try to break it down as much as possible to as simple as possible where like, cause if you can't explain that to, you know, how do you expect an agent to be able to explain that to a homeowner who's not in, you know, in the business at all? Yeah. And that's, right? you know, key thing that you just said <clears throat> is how do you explain it to a homeowner who's not in the business? Right. The consumer is so far removed. Look, most people don't buy or sell a house every within, I mean, they, they, I think the average is like anywhere between 10 I mean, and 12 years. I can't remember what it is. A decade. 
It's only a thing. I mean, how many trans? I mean, the average person, what it's like three, four. Yeah, they don't know. They in a, hear in these their lifetime, four or five, like. Yeah, and so know, they hear these a, catchphrases, and a lot of agents that I'm speaking to, they're they're viewing these questions as objections, and I said, no, they're not objections. You know, I. The, we've talked about this before. There are two. There are two variables to value. There's there's the the perceived worth of the goods and services you receive, and then there's actually what you pay. And without those two variables, you can't identify what value is. Well, agents, the consumer is hearing all of this noise, and it's noise that they don't understand. They can't comprehend it. They don't have the background or the understanding or the experience or the knowledge to be able to know what this means. So when they come to the agent and ask questions, in my experience, a lot of agents are mis representing the fact or misunderstanding that these are not objections they're clarifying questions right it's fair i heard i don't have to pay commissions anymore is that true no no it's not <laughs> not with me not with me but i got I, I i got this uh question from an agent what do i do if a buyer doesn't want to pay in a, a commission and yet i don't want to lose them as a buyer I tried not to do this, but I kind of paused and I think my head went like this. And my response was, I said, this comes down to identifying your, your, your ideal client avatar. Who do you want to work with? And you have to decide, do you want to work with paying customers or do you want to work with non-paying customers? I tell you that life is much better working with paying customers than, <laughs> and life is much harder working with ones who don't pay. So. Right. I mean, it really comes down to, to, to that. But, you know, for that, that was a, a very direct answer. But I think there's more clarifying questions you have to ask as far as what is that base? What's the base question? Because that's right. a surface level one. Right. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting to see how everything shakes out. I, I imagine there's going to be a significant amount of, like, you know, innovation slash, like, disruption um i could very easily see things going to like a flat rate or kind of like an a la carte type of stuff on the on the buyer side where um you know they can people can pick and choose like like i don't need you to show me around the houses like i just need you to handle the you know the, the paperwork for me you know it's interesting when you start looking at this is this is number one? It's no different than what was what was being happened. The industry hasn't changed. Right. Now the people, their processes, their practices, those have evolved over time. But as far as the the, the big industry shakeup is that the MLS is no longer you no longer offer cooperating compensation through the MLS. That's that's right. the big thing, and so. What you had just said, it already exists. You have discount brokerages. You have flat right. fee brokerages. But you also have that in other industries. You have that in, you know, when, when during the Great Recession, when we were in that default mitigation area, you had people that were document prep services. Right. You didn't get a whole lot of good advice with that. You just got someone who just filled in the blanks and, and kind of gave you right. a structure over that. And, you know, for some people that might work. I think for someone like me and someone like you who we value time and experience more so, you know, I, I think a lot of times people are looking at things from time or money. Uh -huh. And there are certain people who have a higher value on their time than the trading value of the dollar. Right. So... Um, I do think that you're, you're right, but just like the legal field, if you get a traffic ticket, look, you might want to just represent yourself. You might want to just hire that little AI thing to, to draft a, a complaint. But you know, if you're, if you're facing a serious crime, whether you're innocent or guilty is irrelevant, but if you're just facing a crime or, or something with the IRS or you know, right. anything else, then now the value of your time and the value of someone else's experience, that changes. And I think that buying a house, man, you know, 
There are so many. It's not just filling out the paperwork. It's navigating title. It's navigating inspections. It's navigating mortgage finance. It's, um, it's managing the headwinds and all of the other dozen problems that are always going to come up. Right. So I, yeah, I don't it, think many people will last. Well, I mean, 50% of the eight, I mean, I think it's about 50% of the agents in the market right now are doing one or less transactions annually anyway. That's, I, I would say that that's uh, a fair assessment. Right. I would say so that's a like fair, that. probably a fair assessment. <clears throat> you know, I, I can't remember who I was speaking to, but they, were, they, they quoted this analyst, this real estate analyst. And what they're promoting is that without the shakeup, they were anticipating a, a 20% drop in real estate agent workforce. Mm -hmm. Like 20% are going to get out of the business. So right. the recommendation giving all this headwind is like, okay, if you want to prepare, plan, plan for a 30%. 30%. That's, that's, that's like, well, on, on a million, that's 300,000 agents. And what is that? 450, 450,000 agents. Now, to your point, I think the majority of them are not doing, well, the only reason why you get out of the business is if you're not doing the transaction. So um, the only thing that's happening is yeah, they were already out of the business. I call them zombie agents. Their business has died. They just don't know <laughs> right. it yet. But, uh, you know, yeah. but, but I do see value in what you do. I do see that business as usual while I believe that it's just, you know, the, the fundamentals haven't changed, the business practices have evolved into work with me. It doesn't cost you anything. Work with me. It's free. Why would you want to work with someone? Look, I can, I can validate the benefits on whether or not I'm the listing agent talking to a buyer. Um, I, I, can, I, can, I can sit with someone based on the situation. I can sell the value of not having a buyer's agent. And I can sell the value of having a buyer's agent. And it's all going to be predicated on where I sit within the transaction. Right. But, um, you know, to your point, they have to innovate. You have got to have a website. You have got to have a landing page. You have got to have a, a digital strategy. You have got to figure out a way to not be the secret agent in your market and that's really where you come in you've you've, you've got to yeah it's not i mean at an individual level like there's not you know there i mean it, for anybody who wants to do the business full time and as you know a primary source of income it's not you know the it, you know it will just continue to and, and for for you know probably for a good thing to call call the herd there for um, you know, get a lot of those people out, but because I mean, it's, <clears throat> I think you always say this, it's like, you know, nobody, you know, the majority of people don't, uh, you know, it's like a, a fallback backup plan. Yeah. To, to get into real estate. Very it's few like, people grew well, up wanting to be a real estate. I, I didn't. Right. Did I tell you my story, how I got into real estate? I don't think I ever heard that. My buddy got into loans first. <laughs> <laughs> you know? My whole thing, and, and you're the same way, we're very entrepreneurial minded. The focus is what industry can you go into that provides the maximum return for the minimum gain, for the, for the minimum input, right? We get the maximum right. output for the minimum input. And in real estate, because it's a high dollar transaction, it typically comes with a high dollar compensation. And so that's what was really right. the magnet into into why I got into real estate. Um, I don't particularly right. like, you know, I, some people say that they love real estate. They do it because they like seeing houses and stuff like that. I don't. And um, I question yeah, whether or not. They're, they're lying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's Because my that's thought is, okay, if you love it so much, <laughs> then that means if you did it for free, would you still do it? And they're like, no. I'm like, well, you don't love it that much. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, I just love the farmhouse style. I'm like, yeah, it's nice, but like, you're not going to, you know. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm actually, um, you know, one thing I am interested to see how it rolls out 
is how the open houses are going to work. Now, my, my, I don't know, my layman understanding of what's going on with, with open houses, the thing that the NAR settlement says that you have to have a signed buyer representation agreement before you show properties. So right. a lot of questions are coming up with open houses. I'm like, you know, my very simplistic mind is like, well, look, it's not the buyer's agent who throws, it's not the buyer agent that throws yeah. the open house. It's the listing agent. The listing agent is doing it based on the services instruction right, right. for the, the seller. Now, if they wanted, so, so I don't, I don't understand that whole thing, but we'll my, see how that comes my out. Initial, uh, my initial thought process, as soon as I kind of like read through everything and, and started to digest stuff was, and this is from my standpoint of like, okay, what's the angle here? Like what, how are we going to like navigate this? Like my instant gut reaction was open houses are just going to crush it and open house like campaigns because there's going to be so many people and in twofold like listing agents being able to suck up absorb buyers right there and potentially be able to represent both of them in the transaction um and and uh, on the flip side of that right now i mean statistically speaking we're seeing 22 percent of all leads come in our existing homeowners um and that's w almost one out of every four people is another potential listing. Like, so, hey, I'm happy to represent you for free if you list your home with me or we could bundle this package deal in. Um, so from, from my standpoint, you know, from, from where I view it, I, I feel like there's, there's going to be a lot of meat on, uh, on the bones for, for that angle. You know, when we start talking about open houses, I can honestly say that there is no fundamental benefit to the seller of having an open house. When you start looking at the stats of how buyers find properties and how they buy properties, I can't remember the exact number, but I think it's like less than 1% actually occur through an open house. It's definitely a low 1, 2, or 3%. But right. then when you start looking at the risk involved into our society most you know you're, you're you're inviting a bunch of strangers into your house to just look at your stuff right and 30 years ago 40 50 years ago that was required because we didn't have the technology you had to the 26 years ago you had to preview properties and go into the inside you had to do broker tour, tours to actually see what is on the market you fast forward to today where you have virtual reality, where you have virtual walkthroughs. Right. There's so much things that you can that can be done now that eliminates the open house. Right. And then you throw on top of that safety reasons. You start uh, the, the open houses. Like as I start thinking about all these stories that come in where realtors, real estate professionals get assaulted, it always stems from them being alone at an open house or a or a, right. a, sh a showing like that. So I don't see in this day and age the value of that. In fact, uh, I didn't see it a dozen years ago when I was listing property. I would encourage sellers. They're, they're like, what about an open house? I'm like, I, I discourage open houses. Can I tell you why? And they're like, why? Well, part of my services, is that I do this, this, and this. I do a video walkthrough. We do a virtual, you know, virtual open house has been around for a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we do this. And instead of having, would you rather have a bunch of strange, but it was more expensive back then. I mean, you know, con, you, know you, you couldn't even do it yourself back then. Back then, I actually, that's not true. I, did, I had those little flip cameras. I had a flip camera that I'd walk around and I would give a video walkthrough tour part of that in addition to getting a virtual, um, uh, a virtual 3D mock-up. But... Um, the, the, the pitch was, do you want hundreds of people, strangers, walking through your house? And the answer is typically no. Okay, right. well, that's, you know, so now you're increasing value. Now, you could use that into putting it into a private thing 
right. you know, put some requirements out of it. You know, before you uh, preview this property physically, we encourage you to, you know, go through the video walkthrough, watch the, you know, do this, that, and the other, drive by the property. Um, if you have representation, contact your agent. If you don't have representation, if you have an, if uh, if you don't have representation, one will be appointed to you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you 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 just sign a buyer agreement right when you go in. It's like <laughs> click here to agree. You know, one of the, that's interesting because one of the things that I used to do is when when people would I would have a lot of marketing out, and when people would call me and they want to see a property, then. Um, I would show them one or two properties because I want to have that face-to-face -face conversation because that face-to-face mm -hmm. -face conversation is where I do a preliminary kind of pre-call, not a pre-call on whether they can buy a house. It's a pre-call on whether or not I want to work with them to buy a house. Yeah. And a lot of that has to do with their financial health, where they're at in the market, if, if they just want to kick tires or, or, or whatnot. Right. So I think that that – um, you know, number one is that NAR is not a the, – the Real Estate Association is not a governing authority. So this is not legislation. This is membership rules and membership rules. Um, I served on uh, a grievance committee and a professional standards committee. That's the, that's the policing arm of membership. Right. So I, I don't know what that's going to look like, but it's a potential fine – it's a potential, you know, you could lose access right. to your membership. So you're not going to jail. You're not going in front of a judge. You're not going to get sued. I'm sure there's going to be state legislation that follows, but I mean, that's going to go. I mean, you and I are going to have like a lot more gray hair probably before all that <laughs> takes hold. So we'll see. But I, I think what you're doing as far as getting it out in front of it and really having that conversation and setting the stage all of this is going to come down in, in, in the next few months and it's going to seem like it just came out of nowhere. Right. It, it's been interesting. Like there's, you know, I'm, it, the conversations that I'm having, there's some people that are like, I'm preparing for it now. I'm doing everything I need to do to kind of like set myself up. And then there's a whole nother camp of folks that are like, you know, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, my broker told me to just wait and, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll give me the updates on, you know, on things. I think we're going to have a, a talk about it at the end of the month. Like not could care less, you know, just continuing on business as usual. Um, not almost to the point where they're, you know, just vaguely even aware of it. I'm like, really? Like you're, this is your business and you're not like, um, what state are I they guess, in? This was the so so it seemed to have been a lot of people like Midwest, um, uh, Minnesota, um, Michigan. I don't know, like upper Midwest kind of area seems to be, and that's just my kind of like general pulse of of <laughs> if, if i'm just gonna throw something at the wall of like the people who are like not really you know caring a whole lot so interestingly the, enough there are it's my understanding that there are 18 states that have existing requirements laws that require written buyer representation before mm -hmm. providing services and there are eight states that have laws that prohibit the use of dual agency, you know, where you can re represent both parties, which is never right. made. It. I've, I've, I've done that once or twice. Um, I, I didn't feel comfortable with it. And so I never did it ever, ever, ever again. Oh. Um, but the, my unscientific point of view, just by, as I go out and I talk to people is even in those states, that require written buyer agency agreements. Those buyer agency agreements are typically getting created and signed at the time they write the offer, their initial offer, right. not before that. So, and, and so I speculate, I'm currently in the position that there's a minority of agents, a very small percentage 
that do a cons consultation, that they meet with them beforehand, and so on and so forth. Now, those people, yeah, they, they, they're, right. they're like me. They're like, what's going on? I'm like, what, should I be tripping out? <laughs> like, everyone's tripping out. Should I be tripping out? And, and uh, right. you know, you, you, know you, you and I have got to talk about this over the last several months. And if you remember at the beginning, I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Right. But I can understand. I do remember when buyer agency became a thing in Utah. I think it was revised in 2014 and I got licensed in 88 or excuse me, 98. And I think that, um, I, if I remember the, the, look, I was young at that time. Um, uh, I was just getting out of the Marines. I didn't know failure. I didn't know risk, didn't care about it. I just went in a direction right. and I went. <laughs> so it came up. Uh, but I do remember the conversations. I do remember the fear. And I do remember that, oh, my gosh, this is going to be a take down our industry. I think our industry is a little bit more robust than that. Very, quite durable. There is questions, though, on lenders having to change their lending criteria to allow the finance of commissions. Yeah. And look, we'll see where that comes out of. I mean, there's a whole lot of... Uh, underwriting guidelines, investments, and, and such yeah. that they have to go into that. My thought process is is I really do. I, I, I'm 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 probably just taking this from a very too simplistic approach. Is if you're a buyer's agent representing a buyer who needs to have the compensation changed, they find a house, pick up the phone, call the listing agent, say you have a buyer who's interested. This is the commission. Is your seller willing to pay it if we bring them a bona fide offer? If they say no, go show them another house. If they say yes, go show this house. And that's where the idea came up with your with the the website service. Right. You know, in a sense, you're making your own little you're you're making your own little MLS. Look, they're already there. I mean, if yeah. you look at all of the 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 sites that are already there, they already have. Um, I mean, like a simple IDX. Yeah. That you have that's like. <laughs> yeah. You know that you could sort yourself. You're like. Um, I mean, you're just not, you know, yeah. So, it, yeah, it, it's uh, it's interesting, you know. Um, there, I, I, it would be hard for me to like think that there wouldn't be some sort of financial or like financial product or something that will figure out how to help people get plugged in or state programs for first time buyers or things like that where um you know they have you know you can get a, a credit or something <clears throat> yeah well my friend with that we are at yep. time we're a few minutes uh over but definitely more of this to unravel and for us to talk so for those of you watching thanks for watching luke it's always a pleasure. We'll see you next week and see everyone else next week. Rock and roll.